Hello, I'm Dr. David Richardson. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California, and on my morning commutes, I like to discuss those topics that there's simply not enough time to discuss in a typical exam room situation. So today I'd like to discuss the topic of how frequently visual fields should be performed. Now, visual field testing, as I've discussed in the past, is something that neither doctors nor patients really enjoy, and so we'd both like to do it as infrequently as possible, but what's an appropriate frequency? Um, let's take a, take a look at that together as we uh, take off. So, the appropriate frequency really depends on one's diagnosis. And although there are no hard and fast rules for how frequent visual fields should be performed, there are some guidelines uh, that we can discuss depending on where one is in the glaucoma diagnosis. So is one just a glaucoma suspect? Uh, does one have chronic but controlled glaucoma, uncontrolled glaucoma, early diagnosis, advanced glaucoma? So you see there's, there's a whole bunch of things that we need to consider in uh, determining the answer to this question. So we'll start with suspicion of glaucoma. Someone who is simply a glaucoma suspect may not need frequent visual fields once the level of suspicion has been determined. So for example, someone who is only a mildly uh, as an exam that's only mildly suspicious for glaucoma, so there's some soft evidence but no hard evidence, uh, they may be able to get away with visual field testing only once or twice a year. Whereas somebody who is uh, highly suspected of glaucoma by their eye doctor may need more frequent visual field testing. How about somebody who has just been diagnosed with glaucoma? Well, this is interesting. Um, there's some evidence, and I agree with this, that at initial diagnosis is when the most frequent visual field testing really needs to be done. And the reason for that is that when someone is first diagnosed with glaucoma, what we don't know is how aggressive the glaucoma is. So in other words, what is the rate of loss? And the only way to discover a, a rate of loss, as we all remember from our early math classes in uh, their middle school or high school, is you need to plot that out. So you need to get multiple points, multiple tests over time and plot out a rate of loss. So clearly the more frequent the testing, the faster you're going to be able to get multiple points to plot that out. So I actually recommend at initial diagnosis that visual field testing be performed every two to three months uh, in order to get to that rate. Once I see what the rate is, then I think it's perfectly appropriate for somebody who has a slow rate uh, of loss to uh, lengthen the time between visual fields. Uh, there is a caveat to that though, and we'll get to that in the next couple of, uh, of topics here. Let's talk about somebody with uh, chronic but controlled glaucoma. So somebody who's being treated for glaucoma, so known glaucoma, not a suspect, but by all evidence, visual field testing, uh, evaluation of the optic nerve, both uh, by examination by the doctor as well as scanning, uh, someone like that who's well controlled with no evidence of, uh, no strong evidence of progression, can be monitored with visual field testing usually about twice a year. Uh, some will extend it a little bit further out than that. I'm personally not comfortable with um, going beyond uh, you know, once a year and somebody has to have you know essentially years of evidence of uh, stabilization with excellently controlled intraocular pressures. Um, and the reason why my preference is twice a year uh, testing, if not visual field testing, at least uh, uh, optic nerve scanning is, but that's a separate topic, is that glaucoma is not always so well behaved. So you can have uh, what appears to be well-controlled glaucoma, uh, kind of putting along just fine, and uh, you know suddenly, for reasons we don't understand, uh, the intraocular pressure can escape control. And given that glaucoma is a symptom-free condition for the most part, um, that's something that we wouldn't detect unless there were multiple visits, multiple visual fields each year.
How about uncontrolled glaucoma? Well, somebody whose glaucoma is not under good control needs more frequent testing because in someone like that, we're really trying to establish how low the pressure needs to be uh, as well as how aggressive the glaucoma is. Um, so in those who are not controlled, I will often recommend uh, visual field testing every few months, every three to four months, sometimes even more frequently. Advanced glaucoma. Advanced glaucoma is another situation where visual field testing really should be done uh, more frequently. And the reason for that is that unfortunately the more advanced glaucoma, the more uh, visual field loss there is, the more aggressive the glaucoma tends to be. So uh, in other words, the rate of loss increases. So in that case, you really do need more frequent visual field tests in order to detect the rate of loss and to see whether it's increasing or stabilizing. Uh, now the other thing that makes it necessary to test those with advanced glaucoma more, more frequently is that the more advanced the visual field loss, the more field to field fluctuation there tends to be. So in other words, you can have what appears to be visual field loss or even improvement and really not know for sure that that's a true loss or, though unlikely, improvement. Uh, so many times when visual field loss is detected, it really needs to be repeated in order to confirm that that is an actual loss. This gets to other reasons uh, that are unrelated to diagnosis or not directly related to diagnosis, why visual field testing may need to be uh, repeated or performed more frequently. So we've also, uh, so we've already rather uh, talked about test to test variability. Now, although that is more likely to occur in advanced glaucoma, uh, it does occur to some extent with all forms of glaucoma. So in other words, every test is going to be a bit different from the past test, even if you were to repeat it the following day. Uh, so if, if a test is worse a day after uh, an initial test and um, the pressures are fine, there's no reason to believe the glaucoma is worse, it, but it appears to be worse on the second testing, is it really worse? Probably not. Um, but because of test-to-test -test variability, uh, one may need to test the visual fields more frequently than one would otherwise wish to do. Um, and then there's just the, the need to confirm, is this really worse or not? So whenever there's a suggested change, but not a definite change, often we'll need to repeat that. Uh, the other thing is poor quality testing. Uh, there's so many things that can affect the quality of the visual field. If someone has not uh, slept well the night before, if someone is um, concerned or anxious about something potentially completely unrelated to their glaucoma or the visual field testing. Uh, if um, someone is otherwise distracted, has dry eyes, there's so many things, uh, just forgets to focus on the uh, fixation spot. These things can all result in a poor quality visual field. A poor quality visual field is not a useful field in terms of determining loss from glaucoma. So in that case, the field needs to be repeated. Uh, other things, uh, surgery. So for example, anytime someone has surgery that could change the vision or impact the treatment of glaucoma, uh, we need to get new baseline fields. So cataract surgery, which tends to improve the vision, we need to get a new baseline after cataract surgery. Glaucoma surgery, uh, we should get a new baseline after glaucoma surgery once somebody's healed up and the vision's cleared up. Uh, this actually gets back to um, something I should have talked about earlier, which is baseline visual field testing. The the very first visual field performed is usually not that great because there's what we call a learning artifact, which means that that really should be repeated within a couple of months uh, in order to see what the true baseline is uh, after one has kind of figured out how to uh, perform the visual field testing. Uh, then there's the need to occasionally uh, zoom in on the center of the vision. So the standard visual field testing uh, is what we call 24-2 or 30-2, essentially 24 to 30 degrees of visual field around fixation. Uh, but it's known that when there is depression of the central field, uh, the glaucoma can be more aggressive. So it's important to occasionally check just the central visual field or the central 10 degrees of field. Um, that central 10 degrees is incredibly important because 
not only, as I alluded to, does glaucoma tend to be more aggressive when the central field is impacted, but the central field is what we use for reading, for recognizing faces, for recognizing emotions. Uh, so it's critical for person-to-person -person interaction. Uh, it's also important for uh, using computers, tablets, watching videos, all of these things. So we really want to protect that 10 degrees of field as, you know, as it's so important. Uh, so that really requires zooming in once in a while, which means an extra visual field. In summary, although we really don't like to do visual field testing, it turns out that we really should probably be doing it more frequently. One would prefer not to do it, but given that the alternative is to potentially miss progressive loss of vision, now the question one really needs to ask is which does one prefer more, uh, or less as the case may be, um, frequent visual field testing or permanent progressive loss of vision that would otherwise be undetected. Uh, my sense is that uh, we should have more frequent vis visual field testing, pretty much as frequent as, uh, as we can bear, uh, because we really don't want to miss that loss of vision. My next video will be uh, how visual field testing fits in with other testing. I alluded to uh, OCT, optical coherence tomography, or what are called optic nerve scans. And so I'll be uh, discussing uh, how that can be used alongside of visual field testing, uh, rarely instead of visual field testing. And I uh, hope you'll find uh, that interesting, and I hope you found this one to be interesting and, and helpful as well. All right.